Now, hmm, things are pricey. Yo. The way cost of things will switch up on you. You go to the store today is one price. The next day, it's another price. Of course, your salary is not changing. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is MC. On this channel, I create impression videos, vlogs. Today's video, I'll be talking about how to save big as an immigrant in Canada. <sighs> the reason why I'm bringing up this particular conversation is because I've realized that people have been complaining a lot in Canada. I inclusive, but there are ways in which as a new immigrant or even as an immigrant currently living here, you can try to maneuver it. And this is especially for the international students. You guys know that I always always got you and if you don't already know i came into canada as an international student i graduated last year winter session so i have quite a good number of experience as an international student and also as an immigrant living in canada without further ado let us quickly go into this video disclaimer i'm not a licensed immigration consultant so anything i'm talking about here please do your research as well so the first point buy groceries in bulk right now the inflation is inflationing <laughs> if there's an english like that and things are getting a lot expensive especially since covid right like people have been trying to balance their costs and their savings and <laughs> there's been a lot of conversation around that or so basically try to buy your groceries in bulk there are a couple of stores like Costco wholesale club that you can actually get things from and not just that you can share things with people let me see if i have that point separately or maybe i should just touch on it here okay i still have it in the point so let me just say buy groceries in bulk it will help you save a great deal i know that this might be a little bit difficult for international students but at least for a family please try to get Costco membership card or any membership card for places where you can buy bulk purchases. It's going to help you a lot, especially as a family. You need to pay for those membership, by the way. But yeah, I would say that it's a better option. It helps you to save considerably well when you're living here in Canada. The second thing I wanted to talk about is check out for discounts and sales in stores. This could be for clothes, shoes, gadgets, food. Yes, food. There are some items in Superstore or No Frill sometimes that they tend to discount. You would see maybe 30% 30% discount on them just because it's very close to expiry and they want to get rid of it from the store There are also sales period like maybe Mother's Day sales The sales would have started like way before Mother's Day There are Easter sales, there are Black Friday sales, back to school sales During that period, that's when people typically buy new phones, buy new laptops, everything like that Try to look out for sales Also when you're buying things from say maybe Amazon or all of these popular franchise like online stores try to look out for coupons try to use them if you see codes use them as well and this is not to say to buy things that you don't need because that's actually very tricky just because you're trying to cut cost if you see something sometimes you might be like ah maybe i'll need it let me just get it if you know that you don't need it don't bother to buy it there are a lot of sales that goes on and on every year in canada okay i wanted to also talk about discounts in stores this is like wholesale club superstore or even maybe all the stores sometimes the amounts they sell online can be different from the amounts that you get in the store so try to weigh them as well and see which one is cheaper some people would say that walmart is cheaper than superstore but then again superstore carries much more variety than walmart so do the comparison and try to see which one is cheaper but in my opinion i'll just say generally things are pricey right now so that's what i'm going to say try as much as possible to look out for discounts okay <laughs> except you know <laughs> from a wealthy family and you don't need it <laughs> The next one that I would say is cook more and buy food less. As students, you're trying to juggle between your part-time job and your school life. I totally, totally, totally understand. It is nerve-wracking. It is overwhelming. It is stressful. But I'm going to advise you. <laughs> In as much as it is good to go to these food chain stores and just get like a quick food, quick snack, <sighs> invest more in home cooked meals than buying outside because when you buy things and cook them yourself if you look at the amount you use like if you want to buy it you might be like ah that's a lot but guess what that pepper the tomatoes you might not be using it at once right so it's gonna help you maybe make more sauce or more whatever like at the end of the day home cooked meals will always be cheaper than buying food from stores so i will advise that you should try to 
invest more in home cooked meals than buying food from the store because before you know it you're just tapping your credit card up and down and at the end of the month the account is not balanced another thing is if you're a student this is my opinion look for a shared apartment aside the fact that living in a shared apartment as a student will help you to cut costs it also helps you with community you have someone around you that you can at least talk to that you can you know communicate with or ask questions or just do life with so instead of just living by yourself and with shared information you'd be privy to a lot of information see i used to tell people that when you are within a particular country it is very easy for you not to know what is going on in that country except things make it to the news really that's when a lot of especially like a lot of young people that's when we are interested in what's going on but when things don't make it to the news we don't really know and personally from my experience i've seen that some of this information may be related to your study permit permanent residency temporary res residency they sometimes don't make it to the news except if it's maybe very controversial <laughs> that's when you hear about it so but when you're living with people that person's friend might hear something and share with the person and the person shares with you like it just helps a whole lot so that's why i would prefer that you should live with someone and it helps you to reduce loneliness like i mentioned it may also help you to reduce cost of living for example if i'm living with maybe a fellow nigerian you know just as an example and the person eats the kind of foods that i eat except if there's maybe issues between you guys or maybe you guys don't gel well which is also a thing you could cook together and save up costs so instead of buying separate things you can buy one thing for the two of you and just share the cost i would always 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 prefer shared apartment to just staying by yourself especially for new immigrants and i'm talking specifically to students like if you're coming as a family of course you cannot live with others right in that case you would have to go out of your way out of your comfort zone to build connections build friendship to network the next one that I have for you is if you're the type that loves to travel a lot and I know that because uh, social media <laughs> thanks to social media maybe I shouldn't talk about this on a bit a lot of the time people just see maybe their fellow friends abroad change outfits back to back and all especially if you're a Nigerian and I come from Nigeria you don't know that in this place they have 30 days return policy meaning you can buy something and if it's still in its good condition you can still return it that is a site another one is gadgets so when iPhones or you know all these popular gadgets come out here you can pay for gadgets for two years you can spread your payment for a number of months or for a period of time so just understand that there is something like that all those unnecessary pressure that people put on themselves please just be coming down which leads me to the next point book flights way ahead of your travel except if it's an emergency travel maybe you needed to quickly go somewhere and it wasn't planned before and it's very important that's when i will excuse emergency travel however see these people here like i've come to understand that the reason why the canadians americans travel as much as they do or the reason why we think they travel as much as they do is because they pay ahead some people book their travel one year before i am not kidding you so that way they get like the lowest amount possible as a nigerian if we're traveling somewhere we're paying for that flight ticket almost before we travel maybe just a month before we travel so that's not a way to save up because that way the closer you are to the travel date the more expensive your flight ticket is or will be the other one i want to talk about is pay attention to bulk purchases in your community there are some things that you will get in this store no doubt but if you network and you know people that maybe share mates share different things it's easy for you to cut costs that way let me give an example i just moved to edmonton right through friendship through collaboration i realized that someone was buying a cow for 2100 and they're trying to share that cow into maybe 10 places seven places eight places depending on the number of people they can get i joined brought someone else to join just so that we can get because at the end of the day what you get looks wholesome compared to what what you buy in the store and for me the meat that we buy in the store is usually very small and 
too soft compared to the cow from the farm that was how i was able to cut costs in that regard things like that you have to talk to people like be aware of what's going on in your environment otherwise see you will just be in your house and you'll be by yourself and this also goes to your school activities because there's some time that the lecturer will probably change the schedule or your assignment maybe there was actually an assignment that you were supposed to submit maybe there was a new change that was communicated you just need people you need to have people around you or sometimes people might even be talking about about or like a part-time job that you can quickly do to earn some side hustle that will still make you be within your 20 hours of, of work like the restriction so you just need people and you need those information to help you sustain your lifestyle or your living expenses in Canada the last one I have for you is have a saving culture it could be to open an account with your bank and be saving there it could be just manual savings challenge for yourself like knowing that at the end of the month there's a particular amount you want to save up and it just helps you to be disciplined i feel like it's very very self-explanatory so i'm not going to go too deep into this i'm saying that because i understand tuition fees can be very expensive mm -hmm. getting a job these days is uh, it's more like a job like a chore but a lot of people still find a way to save something it could just be 200 dollars at the end of the month by the time you save 200 in 12 months that's 2400 before you know it if any miscellaneous expenses should come up or maybe an unforeseen situation comes up maybe like health because even though you pay for a health card or health insurance as a student there are some ailments that your health insurance does not cover so in that case you can go back into your savings box or like your whatever you've saved and you use it to offset such expenses so that's what i wanted to share with you and i just thought it was important that i talk about it not because i am so big on savings culture myself but to an extent i've always been that kind of a person and i just thought you know what let me share now hmm, things are pricey yo. the way cost of things will switch up on you you go to the store today is one price the next day it's another price and of course your salary is not changing <laughs> so that's why i decided to do this video and i hope that you found it helpful if you have any question let me know in the comment section like this video so that i know that you enjoyed it share and subscribe okay don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in my next one Guys.